Hey guys, uh, to the audience out there, hello, this is another talk by Edo, um, otherwise known aka Aiden Corcoran, and this is just on my Tommy talk on the compound effect by Darren Hardy. Uh, so thanks for coming to the talk, and look, I just wanted to kind of kick off and say hi, and um, other than that, well, okay, look, how many times and how many of you have kind of lied back and said, look, um, you know, feeling frustrated, feeling everything, and saying, look, am I getting any closer to my goals? Am I getting done anything during the day, etc.? Uh, I know I have over the years, etc. I've lied there in bed. I've spoke to the spider in the in the, in the lampshade. I have a whole other talk on that, and um, and probably counsellors to see you with regards to that. But imagine if I could go to you and sit down to you and come right beside you and just come up to you and say, "Hey, I'm going to take you back um, to a particular point in time, and I'm going to give you two choices, and that might be a help you feel better, somewhat better this evening." So I'm going to take you back now. What are those choices you might say to me? Well, you might say, well, okay, it's choice number A. And it's pretty clear. I'm going to ask you to work for one hour a day. And for basically for that hour, you're going to get paid 10 bucks. However, every week, that 10 bucks is going to compound interest by 10%. Um, and you're going to have to do that every day without breaking the chain. However, like everything in life, you've got another alternative. Option B, you can work for the same hour each day. However, you can break the chain when you want and come in, but as long as I kind of see you're kind of doing it generally, I'll give you 5,000 bucks per month. But however, that doesn't change. You're going to get five grand a month ongoing. Fair choice. I guess I'll leave it up to you guys to go and make that choice. While you're having that choice, what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe to you where that choice came from. That kind of choice came from our good friend Darren, who I mentioned right at the start. Darren uh, is the editor and uh, owner of the book, um, or the magazine, Success. And what Darren does is, Darren has come up with the compound effect. And where he's come up with that compound effect is that during his book and interviews for success, he interviews some very, very high-achieving entrepreneurs. And these entrepreneurs have many different characteristics. But I guess what they have in common and what he felt they had was an overall common characteristic that they built a compounding growth engine and that they, they put their time and effort into building this particular engine. Warren Buffett in fact actually would have recognized as well and would have actually even called it the eighth wonder of the world. Um, this is what Darren noticed and this is the premise of his book and on that book he basically came up with these particular choices and those back to those two choices. So have you chosen A or B? Well, I can see, and I would like to think that outside in front of me here now, a lot of my audience would have chosen A. Some of you would have chosen B. Uh, there's, there's no right nor wrong here. These are just two choices. But let's presume a lot of you have chosen A. Right, where would you be after you've chosen A? Remember what I said, you're going to get 10 bucks an hour. Every week it's going to come on by 10%, but you have to not break the chain and be there all the time. Option B, you need to, you're going to get five grand a month and do the same hour. However, you can come and go maybe sometimes. Well, basically option B, first month, first three months. Option A is you're now on 235 bucks. Option B is have made 15 grand. Mm, there's a fair bit of scratching in the head now. A lot of people not exactly delighted on what they have done or what they haven't done. Uh, this is kind of a conundrum, as they might say. Where we got after 12 months? After a whole year of hard work and slog, basically our option A is have only really caught up to <coughs> where option B were at three months. However, option B, they'd probably be back and over to Ibiza, swatting around with their 60 grand salary and are kind of what I would call maybe flying up and down the road in their nice new car. However, what's happening after shortly after? That compounding effect is now beginning to kick in. And you can see that our option Bers have kind of hit, hit a nice streak. They're on 80 grand, still a lot of money. But now our option Airs have caught up with them and gone a little bit ahead on 86,000, just under 87,000 a year. Where does that take you? And what can you see from that? Well, what you can really see from that is a growth in what I would call momentum, is a head of steam. I'm a qualified mechanical engineer. And one of the things that can run engines, run life, is heads of steam. In fact, there's a whole industrial revolution going on in that. And you're witnessing one here. Because what happens after 24 months, option A has now gone to 2.2 million. 
whereas option B is at 120,000. So an awful lot of people now are looking at option A going, wow, that was a really good, smart decision. Wasn't a smart decision way back, but however, their minds have somewhat changed. But option B is, of course, they're kind of on 120 grand looking over option A going, did I miss the boat here? Should I have done something different? 120,000 isn't a bad amount of money. It's a lot of money. Um, you know, not to be scoffed at, but it's a hell of a lot short of 2.2 million. And so what's really the difference here? The difference is, is that the option beers kind of chose, they wanted and wanted now. In a sense, kind of like that famous Queen song, Freddie Mercury, he wants it all, he wants it now. I'm a big Queen fan, was back through the years, etc. Uh, but Freddie, unfortunately, he probably didn't mind it, he probably wouldn't have cared, but he would have lost 2 million quid because he wanted it all and wanted it now. So what happens is, is that option B, or option A, has drastically outperformed option B because they kept the focus on the small term actions. And that even as Darren Hardy, Hardy would have said, through the results, even though the results are massive, 2.2 million, the steps in the moment weren't that big. And they didn't feel that significant. The changes were so subtle. However, they accumulated to deliver that big result. So Darren would suggest that's the overall premise of his book. That's the overall premise of his notice. So how do we go about doing that? What he did was he basically broke it down into three compound rules. And today I kind of go through those three rules with you. The first one is instant gratification. It's what Darren uh, would have called basically the, right, the microwave mindset. It's basically the one minute meal. So what we are is we're tuned into that because what we have is we have shipping without, within hours. Now we've got fast foods, we've got drive throughs we can get instant downloads. And God forbid we'd have a queue like we used to have back in the 1980s. And ultimately, you know, that's the way we're tuned into the world right now. And of course, you know all about this because look at if you're like myself and I won't exactly turn to my curvy features, but like oftentimes I will run on to those what I call instant diets where basically I run after after New Year's, <coughs> I get off everything, I end up eating what I would call uh, lettuce, cabbage and maybe beetroot water. I lose a couple of stone, I tell everybody I'm so great and by St. Patrick's Day I'm already the size I was before entering the thing anyways and I'm back drinking Guinness and I'm happy out doing it etc. And it has borne no results whatsoever other than probably denting my confidence that it'll never work in the first place and making me disempowered. But I suppose the long term and the premise of this is the long term results through, in, through consistent small actions. So if I had started on January the 1st, which I actually have done this, this year, is by cutting out what I would call small calories, cutting out what I would call treats, and doing these things for over the long term will reach my two-year goal of looking the way I want to be. But I have to accept that that's out there in the future. And I have to accept that the small actions done consistently now will help me achieve that. The other one then is something that is basically rule number two is be, be driven by values. Value driven decisions are better than instant, sorry, value driven decisions help us get over the need for instant gratification because we are picturing ourselves out there in the future. We are going towards a goal and a vision that we foresee for ourselves. And if you think of the people that you know in the world who were goal, great visionaries, great goal setters. And these people, what was it that made them great? What made them great was that they looked at that goal and they made value-based decisions and they did not take what I would call the instant gratification that could have been afforded to them at the time. Here I have a little sign for myself. I have a ship and I have a thing and I have up in the top corner is lose sight of the shore. It's a big value for me. In fact, if I look over my shoulder here, you'll see it's up on my wall. It's basically you cannot travel the oceans unless you lose sight of the shores. It's a quote from the, an old uh, French poet, Andrew Gide. And it's a very, very famous one, but very, very true. So everything I do in life and over the last 15 years, I've constantly asked myself, is this pushing my boundary? Is this pushing me out there, making me come uncomfortable? Is it pushing me out to sail across the oceans? Is it making me go to where I kind of want to go, etc.? And of course, that has helped me somewhat and has also made me what I would call on a journey where I've accumulated more because of that. 
And that brings me on perhaps then to the third rule. And the third rule is take consistent small steps. Take these small steps all the time. You've heard me talk about it right through rule one and rule two. But these small little steps and little seeds in the ground are the ones that will bear fruit and they're the ones that will grow into mighty oak trees. And if you take, for example, someone that I suppose I had watched many, many years ago when I was putting my little seeds in the ground way back 20 years ago was a, a comedian called Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld is one of America's greatest comedians. Um, he didn't start off being one of America's greatest comedians, or maybe he did, but I didn't notice. He didn't certainly get on TV because of that. But what he did, and he had one rule, and he had a consistent step rule, and he used to say that every morning when he got up, what he used to do was he would write one joke. And that's not so bad. I don't know what it's like to write one joke, but I'm assuming that it was probably fairly simple, and fairly simple for a professional man of that, of that age. But it was consistent, and he did that every day. And every day what he used to say was he used to mark off on a calendar that he did that. And then over time, he'd look back and he'd see the volume of material that he created. And that gave him the breadth and depth to, to, to grow. And it gave him the breadth and depth to kind of, what I call, achieve what he wanted. So I'm asking you tonight, basically, my challenge to you is to go out there and write down what are those simple little things that you can do. And that you can do to be able to achieve what your end goals and what your value-driven decisions are. So now if you could basically take out, and I have gone somewhat over time, basically take out your diaries and in that diary put in exactly where you feel you'll have the time to review your goals and mark those off. If you get five, that's fine. Restart, and go back and try to get eight. What I'd ask you to do is keep in mind your compound engine rules. Keep in mind that to delay instant gratification, be driven by values and take those small consistent steps. Put it in your diary, get things done, then the future will thank you. Thank you. My name has been Aidan Corcoran.